Why hello there, and welcome to Some Weirdo on the Internet Reviews Obscure Role-Playing Games, a series with a fairly self-explanatory title. And in this exciting first episode, I will be reviewing this random game that I found at the used bookstore. Chaotic, a schizotronic role-playing game, was released by Marquee Press in 1994 and certainly looks like it. But is the actual game as awesome as this cover? Let's find out. Chaotic is set on Earth in the distant year of 2030. The overall backstory revolves around one Dr. Isabella Bain and the trans-ego device that she created, which was capable of sending people across the galaxy to the distant planet of Xenos. Unfortunately, she was also kind of a bad lady and tested the device on children who all died in the process, and then when she got caught, she sent herself through the device before she could be brought to justice, and was never heard from again. That is, until Xenites, those awesome guys from the cover, started being beamed to Earth and just kind of wrecking up the place, and that's kind of where the game starts. The book goes into a pretty good amount of detail on the world of 2030 with politics and trends and technology and stuff like that, and also a general timeline of events, which has had ample time to be proven wrong since then, and also provides a pretty good overview of relevant locations, both on Earth and on the planet Xenos. So overall, concepts are interesting and I think they're pretty well executed. They actually devote about a third of the book overall to setting related stuff, which they kinda had to because they have two completely separate settings that they need to explain to the player. So good ideas, well executed, and that earns the setting a four out of five. Players in Chaotic take on the role of volunteers in the International Society of Enlightened Scientists and are tasked with fighting the Xenite invaders or, when necessary, taking the fight to Xenos via the Transego device. Players start by selecting a profession which provides all of your base attributes, which is kind of convenient because there are 11 of them. So let's say we want our character to be a professor, so we would choose that profession which provides our base attributes, which can be adjusted somewhat, and eight skills. We would then choose a type, several of which there are for each profession, which grants an additional three skills. Next, we are given a number of points that we can use to buy additional skills or advance ones that we already have. Now, the thing I like here is that you get both mental and physical skill points derived from your mental and physical attributes, so you kind of have to spend your skill points in keeping with your character's attributes instead of just, you know, dumping them all into weapon skills. And after that, we just need to calculate our wound track based on stamina, which I will be going into in more detail in the next section, and select our Psi powers. Now, you might be thinking, Hold on, you never said anything about Psy powers before. And yes, I didn't. I will be getting to that in the next section. But for now, let's just choose our Psy talent and our four starting powers, and we are done. Overall, character creation is kinda meh. There's a lot of options in terms of professions and the types, but none of them are really distinctive. Except one. And the amount of skill points you get to customize your character is really enough that the skills your profession gives you aren't really that big of a deal. So there's nothing really lacking here, but also nothing really notable. So character creation gets a 3 out of 5. Chaotic uses an interesting system which is kind of like a dice pool rollover hybrid, with some odd quirks added to it. So let's say our history professor wants to make a history check. We would roll a number of dice equal to their knowledge attribute plus any advancement that they had put into the history skill. Then we remove any dice that came up over three, add all the other ones together, and get a total of eight. Then we take our result and reference the conversion table to get a result of superior, which we then give to the game master, because you are explicitly forbidden from giving out your results as numbers. And this is honestly one of my biggest complaints about the game. There is this weird insistence that numbers not be used out of some bizarre urge to not break the immersion of the game. And like, I understand that's what they're going for, 
but rolling dice and adding them together and conveying the result of that to another person who then determines whether an action is successful or failure is going to break the immersion a little bit, whether you're saying great or seven. And also it just kind of makes some things more complicated, like anytime a role is modified by something, they are given in that very same format, but that really only comes up in rare situations like combat. Now, the system here is what they call semi-diceless, meaning that, in general, the GM does not roll dice. Uh, if a player makes an attack, they roll for the attack. If a player is subject to an attack, they roll defense. It is an idea that I like, although I'm not really sold on how well they implement it. So let's say our character is attacking an enemy with good defense and they roll their dice and they get an eight. They would then convert that eight into superior and tell the GM, who then converts the superior attack and good defense back into eight and six respectively, then subtracts these defense from the attack to get the base damage of two, which is then multiplied by the character's damage rating, which they are actually permitted to give in the forbidden numerals, let's just say it's 6, for a result of 12, which they then look up on the wound table and determine to be a medium wound, which is then applied to the enemy's wound track. And that brings us to the wound system. This is another thing that I like in theory, but not that sure how well it plays out. Instead of hit points, each character has a number of light, medium, heavy, critical, and deadly wounds that they can withstand. So our professor, with their passable stamina, can take two light, two medium, and one heavy wound. When a wound of a specific level is taken, it is marked on the wound track. And if no wounds of that level are available, it is marked on the next higher level. When the rightmost wound is taken, a character is maimed, and if the damage surpasses the wound track, the character is mortally wounded. It's an interesting system, but does have some issues, specifically the ease with which characters with lower stamina can be one-hit KO'd or even killed, like our professor here, who would be mortally wounded by a single critical attack. And that's not exactly an unlikely thing to occur, considering that you're going to be encountering enemies who have rocket launchers grafted onto their bodies. So there's a few more odds and ends, but I think that's really enough to give you a general idea of the rules. And besides, I haven't even gotten to the weird part. As stated earlier, players can use the Transego device to transmit themselves to the planet of Xenos. Kinda. What actually happens is your minds are transmitted to Xenos, where they inhabit an alien body. And no, I did not misspeak, your entire party inhabits the body of one creature. During these times, one player is in control of the body while everyone else are just known as crickets in the back of the head, essentially a disembodied consciousness, which means they cannot interact with the physical world in any way, but also gain access to their latent psychic powers. This is what those psi powers were about earlier. You can use those only when you are this disembodied consciousness in an alien body. Unless you chose the lab rat profession, which allows you to use some of your psi powers when you're on Earth or when you are in control of the body, but it also has lower attributes and no bonus skills, so, you know, it's a trade-off. So essentially, you have your entire party in the head of one creature, one of whom is controlling the creature while the others are using their psychic powers, which drain off the host's physical ability scores, so you're basically weakening your host as you're using these powers, but if you do that too much, you can just jump into another one. Yeah, you can pretty much just grab another creature, have a mind battle with their consciousness, and then everyone jumps into that other body. It is weird and fun sounding. So overall, the mechanics are interesting and seem to work for the most part. Of course, the insistence on using these descriptors instead of numbers does create extra work for everyone, but especially the Game Master who already has a lot of stuff to do in this game. And while there are down points which I suggest, I think that the unique aspects really do make up for them, especially things like the psychic space travel and jumping from body to body and doing all that weird stuff. I like weird, so they get a 4 out of 5. Overall, this book is well written and well laid out, but that's what you should expect from any professionally published book. 
Things are explained fairly well, and when they are less clear, examples are used to help you understand them. So, it's pretty good. That being said, some of the content is placed a little weirdly, like, the character creation process is spread out across four chapters, and at no point ever is just a full summary of the character creation process provided. Although one thing I do like is the skills are printed in the player section with brief descriptions, and then again in the game master section with longer descriptions that explain how to rule them mechanically and such. However, this seems to be just the best thing that came out of a poor decision that was made to take anything that was a bit too crunchy and put it all in the Game Master section. So basically, anything too mechanical was just removed from the player section and all put into this one running the game chapter in the Game Master section, which makes it a little hard to navigate. Once again, I understand their intention there, but it just doesn't feel like it worked out that well. Now, none of this makes the book unusable, just a little inconvenient. So they are still getting a three out of five for writing, but that is very much because I do not give half scores. Chaotic is presented in a lovely perfect bound tome. The overall layout is quite nice. Each chapter actually starts with a few pages from a comic or, I'm sorry, a graphic novel and some mood text to help explain the backstory and some of the more unique aspects of the game. The text is generally laid out in an uneven two-column pattern on a three-column grid, which works out quite nicely when different materials are being presented in the different sections. However, in some points, like right here, uh, text runs directly from this wide column up into the narrow column, and that's just kind of a weird reading experience. Easily identifiable, different content types, lots of use of tables and little boxes. You may be noticing, though, that aside from those comic pages, there is no art in the book at all. Other than these pages from the comic, which are reprinted at the beginning of the chapters, but are stretched really weirdly. And that is an odd thing that they did, because you can also find something like this. And these things really look like they are just placeholder art. Like, they are the stuff that they put there to show where the graphics would go when the final graphics came in, but then the graphics never came in and we just got this. Because, like, I don't think that the end user was ever supposed to see this. Like, what is this? One thing that I do like to see in pretty much any role-playing book, there is a table summary page, which is really good because you need all those tables a lot. Unfortunately, there is no index, so that's a bit annoying because, as I stated previously, navigating this book can be a little tricky. So I'm giving this a 3 out of 5 for presentation, but I would like to be clear that the comic is a big part of that, and if they had devoted those resources to illustrations, I probably would be giving it a 4 or a 5 right now. As previously stated, there is a wide selection of character professions and types, but only one of them is really distinctive in any way. On the other hand, the psi powers provided actually are interesting and varied, and uh, there's 76 of them across 8 different talents, which is a lot of options for something that you only get to use sometimes. The equipment section is by its own description intentionally short, but I actually think it's quite sufficient, and guidelines are provided for making new weapons or upgrading existing ones, which is kind of necessary because one of the options for character advancement is gaining access to more advanced weaponry. However, I do have one issue, and that is a significant lack of NPCs or monsters. Basically, some sample statistics are provided for the different types of Xenites and three different animals, but other than that, there's not much there. Like, 
Yeah, they provide guidelines for making NPCs, but I would much rather just have a section of NPCs, so if I'm running a game, I can just go, I need a guard, let me find a guard, and a couple grunts, and there, I just got them and threw them into the game. How easy was that? And yes, everything doesn't need to be statted up, but when you are on Xenos, the party can pretty much jump into any creature, so anything that's there potentially needs to have stats, and it would be really nice if you could just get those stats really quickly instead of having to stop and stat everything up on the fly. So basically, they give you most of the stuff you need, but you are definitely going to have to make some stuff yourself just for standard gameplay which gets them a 2 out of 5 for content. And there you have it, Chaotic, a schizotronic role-playing game. A game with some interesting concepts, which are mostly well done. In general, the issues it does have do seem to be related to questionable decisions and a possible rushed schedule, which is something confirmed by the author's webpage where it is stated that the publisher was really pushing to get the game ready in time for Gen Con that year, and then apparently at Gen Con, Magic the Gathering had just overshadowed everything else, so didn't do that great. If you would like to check out Chaotic for yourself, uh, used copies are fairly easy to find and fairly cheap, or you could just download a barebones PDF for free from the author's website. There is a link in the description. Alright, thanks for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, you should hit that like button, because that tells me that you liked the video and I should make more like it. Also, if you would like some more obscure role-playing game reviews, I have a blog where I do that very thing. There is a link in the description. Well. Until next time.